William suffers from fragile X in the fact that he has high, low muscle tone, he has large ears, um, flat feet, he also has the developmental delay of course, he has autism and um, anxi high anxiety. My youngest son, Bryn, was diagnosed with Fragile X syndrome after his cousin Connor was diagnosed. So my sister's got a two-year-old who's just been diagnosed with autism and they tested his blood and they found Fragile X and because it's genetic we thought we should test Bryn and he was positive for a full mutation. Fragile X syndrome is the most common known inherited cause of developmental disability and the most common single gene cause of autism. The cause of the syndrome is a result of the expansion or lengthening of a gene on the X chromosome. When the gene lengthens, it switches off production of a protein that is normally vital for normal mental health function. Everybody has the Fragile X gene, but the mutation that we associate with Fragile X syndrome is an expansion of the front part of the gene. So in a female who's a carrier of just a small expansion or premutation as we call it, her other X is normal. So there's a 50-50 chance that she would pass on the mutated X to her children. Men who carry the fragile X premutation carry it on their X chromosome. The men have only one X and one Y chromosome. So if they pass their Y chromosome on, that's gonna to be to a son it, they can never pass on Fragile X to their son, but they will always pass on the Fragile X gene to all of their daughters. Bryn had a lot of feeding problems. He had severe reflux. He didn't like to put food in his mouth. He didn't like a lot of bright light or noises and too much activity would make him very upset. He's a rocker, so he, he does rock a little bit. He's got low muscle tone, so he's not walking yet, and he's a little bit delayed with his speech and, and eating and just that general development delay. Fragile X syndrome presents in three main ways. There are physical features, there are developmental features and there are behavioural and emotional features. In terms of physical features, Fragile X syndrome classically presents with people with a long narrow face, large protuberant ears and a high forehead. Although those features are not always seen. Developmental problems seen in Fragile X Syndrome include intellectual disability, also known as cognitive disability, which means they have difficulty understanding the world around them. They can also present with a range of learning difficulties, in particular with areas such as maths and other abstract academic concepts. The most common behavioural characteristic seen in an individual with Fragile X syndrome is that of anxiety. Significant social anxiety, avoidance of eye gaze and at times withdrawal from social interaction. This can present in many different ways and in other behavioural characteristics. When an individual with Fragile X becomes anxious, they may start rocking, they may hand flap, they may hum or self-talk and di disengage from a particular situation. Many children with Fragile X syndrome struggle with attention. They may have symptoms more consistent with an attention deficit disorder, very distractible, a little bit hyperactive and impulsive in some of their behaviours. It used to be thought that the people who carried the premutation were entirely unaffected, that they just carried the gene but we now know that a percentage of those people will have milder symptoms that are typical of Fragile X syndrome. They may have had some difficulties with social interactions, problems with communication, learning problems at school, anxiety and depression. There's also two conditions, Fragile X premature ovarian insufficiency, which will lead to early menopause, and Fragile X Tremor Ataxia Syndrome. This consists of a Parkinson's type condition with a tremor, a shaking of the hands or legs, a difficulty with walking and a dementia. The advantages of getting a genetic diagnosis is that most families are very relieved to know that there's a cause of their child's or their relative's difficulties in life. It explains a lot of things that they'd often wondered about. 
and gives them options for targeted treatment and management strategies. If an individual has had a diagnosis of Fragile X Syndrome, because it's an inherited condition, it's very important that other family members who are at risk of carrying the gene are identified. This means contacting those family members, letting them know they are at risk of carrying the gene and suggesting that they see their doctor to be tested. Now that we've started testing everybody in our family, we've got five family members that have come back positive and we've got a couple of family members that we're still waiting on results for. So immediately around me, my sister and her son and my son have all been tested positive for Fragile X. Anybody who has features of Fragile X syndrome, so that's developmental delay, autism-like features, learning difficulties, should be tested for Fragile X Syndrome. The other group of people that should be tested are relatives of anybody with Fragile X Syndrome. Anyone who's had a previous one of the older cytogenetic tests for Fragile X Syndrome. Women with uh, ovarian insufficiency or early menopause. And also men with the Fragile X Tremor Ataxia Syndrome, which is a Parkinson's-like presentation with uh, tremor, shaking of the hands, a wide-based gait and an early dementia.